Hey everybody, Jake here with TrendSpider, and today we have a special video going over the Steve Burns Moving Average Ribbon. We have Steve here with us today, and today he's going to explain what exactly the ribbon is, how he uses it, and what it's made up of. So Steve, thank you so much for joining today to go over this indicator that we just added, and uh, I'll hand it off to you. Okay, I appreciate you having me, Jake, uh, and I appreciate this uh, going on to the TrendSpider charting platform. This makes it a lot easier for me to set up charts now where I can push one button and I have all my key moving averages on a chart. These are the key moving averages that I've used uh, over the past uh, 10 to 15 years to uh, trade crossovers and trends. I've uh, been studying moving averages uh, for well over 15 years, and these are the ones that have I found to have the most meaning both in finding support and resistance on a chart as well as back testing as mechanical trend following signals themselves. So mm -hmm. these are the ones after uh, thousands and thousands of back tests and uh, over a decade of experience trading them. These are the ones I actually use on my charts to trade trends and swings. Uh, they actually form a ribbon when you put them all together here and show uh, the layered uh, trends on different time frames on a given chart. Uh, this is a trend and swing trading tool. Uh, that's what the purpose of this the ribbon is. So you want to use the ribbon on charts and stock indexes and markets that tend to trade over time. That's its purpose. It will greatly increase your odds of success if you have stocks that meet all-time highs or, you know, Bitcoin is near all-time highs and that's something you're trading with trend and swing signals, uh, metals, gold, silver, ETFs, uh, the things that trend, not things that just go sideways in a range. Uh, that's not really the purpose of this. So, uh, Got it. The, and the then, so, I was going to say, just sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but so as far as, um, as far as this goes, is it something that can be used kind of a, from a fractal perspective? So could you use this on the daily or you could use it on the 30 minute chart, pretty much any chart that's trending regardless of time frame? Yes, it is something that you could fit into your own parameters for the time frame of the trend that you're looking for. Uh, okay. It does uh, go into higher time frames. I have done tests on higher time, time frames. I myself do not day trade. I am looking for multi-day moves. But, you know, it could fit inside someone, a day trader system, you know, if they're looking for stocks on the move intraday, you know, they can drop it in and work with it. But I would encourage anybody to to back test the actual signals before they start using any crossovers inside the ribbon. I've done back testing all the daily crossovers, the 5, the 20, the 10, the 30, the 10 and the 50 crossovers. I, I use them on specific charts. I use specific signals on specific charts. Uh, based on the historical volatility and trends. So I know it back as well, because every every chart, every stock ETF, they have different levels of trends and volatility historically. So you want to match the right crossover. So, uh, you know, it might work better five minute, 10 minute, uh, 30 minute charts. You want to test and see which one it worked the best on for your particular stock you're trading. Makes, makes complete sense. Okay, awesome. And so um, kind of from a bullish and bearish perspective, are there specific signals that turn bullish versus bearish? And is that a function of price or is that a function of one moving average crossing the others or how does that work? The biggest uh, signals that a moving average ribbon can give you is if price breaks above all key moving averages. If you see price above all key moving averages, that is absolutely bullish. And if it breaks below all key moving averages, uh, that becomes bearish. And that can save you from being on the wrong side of really, really big trends. Because if you're under all key, that means you've lost the 5, 10, 20, 30, and 50 day moving averages, all the support, and you're down lower. So that brings up the odds that you're going to make lower lows. It's the same thing as if you're above all key moving averages, you've broken above all five. So the odds are you're going to go higher in an uptrend. Uh, so those are the two biggest signals that you can use as just an overreaching uh, bullish or bearish on the chart. Uh, in the same way, if the charts all converge together and you start seeing a chart going sideways with uh, all the moving averages going horizontal, that's a signal of a range. So the market could be in a range for a few weeks, and when they all just start going sideways, that's your signal for range bound. Got it. And so let's say that, uh, I guess in September, we had a, a big gap down below all of those moving averages. Um, what, what would be the signal for kind of a reversal there? Is it the fact that the five day moving average EMA is starting to tick back up and starting to increase again? And that's a kind of a time to start looking a little more into a possible reversal from there? Yeah, the first, first signal is a five. It's breaking back over the five-day moving average. Your first signal, 
for me, I would actually look to start to getting into long signals when the five crosses back over the 20. That would be my signal to look for a long for a long play in the five crossing of the 20 on my charts that are high momentum charts like uh, FAS, Goldman Sachs, CarMax, uh, even uh, the GBTC, the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin ETF, a lot of those, they back test well with a 520 crossover alone. So I will enter off of them mechanically, even if you buy the 520 crossover and then you hold it till the five cross back on the 20. If that back tests well, you can use it as an, an overarching model. You know the 520 crossover is bullish. So you can actually trade inside of that knowing you have a lot to work with for trends and swings historically. Got it. Okay. And the beautiful thing about this is on Trend Spider, as you mentioned, it's it's if you wanted to use this on a different time frame, you'd really want to back test it. So the beautiful thing about Trend Spider and using these moving average ribbons is you can back test this. You can create alerts on a specific moving average cross. So there's all of these different ways you can see this visually, but you can also apply it to your trading. Um, let's say that you did want to try it on a shorter term time frame compared to what Steve's using. You can back test this as well. And that's something that's really nice. Uh, so you can get an idea of, you know, does this work for my style? Does this work for the stock that I'm looking at? Rather than just going in blindly and using this without any type of statistical data on it. You want to look at a back test real quick, Jake? Yeah, let's do it. So see if we can go down here. The uh, we do the reset. This is what I actually have named all the crossovers. The 520. I call it the flying the flying eagle crossover. When the five crossed up over the 20 day, and this thing mechanically you hold it like you're a, a trend trader almost until the five crosses back down on the 20 day. So let's look at here's the fast triple lever ETF. This is actually a signal that did really well for me the last week. I think it was over a 25% gain once the signal hit the 520 uh, crossover before the big gap up. But look at the, the back test on this, 769.18% wow. versus 3675. And this is an example. It's not as good of a, of a oh, long-term investment hole because the triple leverage destroys it. But the 520 on this particular ETF sets you up to capture trends and swings, and then it gets you out when it's the big plunge time. You know, the five cross back of the 20 gets you out. But that's if you just do it mechanically. So you know if yep. you're trading it, if you're going to be a swing trader, you have this much profit to work with. You know, you don't have to hold it all the way through to the cross of thunder. You can try to manage your exits if it's overbought or if it loses one short-term moving average, what have you. But you know you have this much to work with. It's going to do a lot better than buying and holding. Uh, yeah, and the, just to just to explain to users, do you mind do you mind explode or kind of expanding that uh, chart again, just to explain kind of what that performance chart is showing? So. When you're using the TrendSpider platform, anytime that you see this blue shaded area bigger or higher up than the historical data, which is the which is the uh, gray line with the red and the greens, which is essentially when the system takes and uh, enters and exits a trade. Anytime you see that blue shaded area above that historical uh, price, uh, just the the line, that means that you're beating buy and hold, and especially something like a three X ETF. Buying and holding over time is essentially kind of like holding an options contract. So even if you are right, it still will likely get decayed. So that's why, especially on a 3X ETF, this is so important because you're able to really take advantage of those percent gains compared to just buying and holding it and getting decayed from, from that uh, theta. So um, that's something I just wanted to point out for those that were curious on what exactly is that blue shaded area versus the, uh, the red and green lines there. Another great thing that it shows is is the average gain is 15.35%, the average loss is 6.12, but your average return is 3.39% per trade. So your profit factor is 3.39% on average. And uh, the, you might lose 56% of losers, 44% of winners, but the gains are so much larger than the losses, it's profitable. And that's what a lot of people do not understand. You're not trying to be perfect. You're not trying to have a 100% win rate. You just want to make money. And that's something people don't understand is there's winners and losers. And the real key is the risk reward ratio you create by letting winners run and cutting losses short. So that's just a really good tool down here to see that. Thank you. Yeah, no, that was great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, as far as, uh, as far as a specific type of asset, do you find this, I know you said trending stocks, but is there is there a particular type of asset like 3x leverage that works better, or is it really just depending on how how strong it's trending? Yeah, I do I do tend to trade uh, the two time and three time leverage ETFs, especially the two time, because 
indexes tend to make new all-time highs over time because they reconfigure the index and the winners go in, the losers go out. People don't understand the SP 500, the NASDAQ 100, those are systems and they keep the winners in. That's why the buy and hold works is you have the diversification of the index. So you're always going with the winners, but you want to do also the winning stocks, the high alpha stock, the ones where most of the win, the profits come from, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Googles, the Netflixes, uh, you know, Facebook, the ones where the alpha really created the market, you know, during this pandemic it could have been Zoom, it could have been uh, Teladoc, you, but you want to find things that are making all-time highs, that you make new all-time highs, and where the alphas really generate. Uh, what I found fascinating for the Bitcoin fans is uh, the Grayscale ETF, uh, GBTC, uh, one of the few uh, trusts that trades like an ETF. Uh, you know, Bitcoin as a trading vehicle, whatever people think about it individually, look at the this is the 520 crossover on the uh, Bitcoin ETF. Uh, we have 6,445.34% for uh, the 520 crossover, Flying Eagle. You buy on the 5 cross of 20, you, the lame duck cross under, you get out when the 5 goes back over 20, but they almost doubled their returns versus just buying and holding. Even the Bitcoin uh, wow. hodlers, hodlers uh, could have been outperformed with the 520 because you're in wow. with the and uptrend. So that's uh, and it's a 50 it's a coin toss 50 percent winners 50 percent losers uh but the average gain is 53.86 average loss of 7.57 for an average return of 23.14 of course this is traded on the over-the-counter market and there could be liquidity issues and it's not an actual etf and it's not uh you know regulated just like a bitcoin is not but it is fascinating to see that these uh, signals work across different markets like you said not just alpha generating stocks and not just uh, indexes and leverage, but also even the grayscale, the grayscale BT, uh, Bitcoin ETF trust. Beautiful. Yeah, no, I, that is fascinating, especially uh, to see how the, uh, the 520 cross actually caught up with the buy and hold. Because initially you did have that spike in 2017 where buy and hold was beating the cross. But over time, it's really starting to outperform that. It's fascinating to see how the equity curve, the magic is, you know, it might have volatility is the biggest enemy of the moving average ribbon, you know, with crossovers. If volatility starts chopping around, you can have some false signals and get hurt. But in the long term, the edge is in letting the winner run and cutting the loss short. To look at the drawdown, a lot of the returns and the crossover si signals come when it's, you're in cash. It said the five cross the 20, you stay to cash. So you're not losing money. But the people that can to hold, the holders, uh, had these big drawdowns, you did not have. So you have more capital when the 520 crossover happens. You have more capital to get back in the upswing. So it's it's really classic trend trading, and uh, that's that's where the crossovers quantify it. And so, just to confirm, the exit here is when the five crosses back down through the 20. Yeah, that that's just one way to do it. That's based on mechanical. If you want to see a mechanical back test to see how that would have worked on a trend trading signal. Uh, you know, and I, a lot of times, like a swing trade, I might exit when the, uh, when it gets to the 70 RSI, you know, I might buy the 520 crossover, then when the price gets up to the 70 RSI, I would exit and lock in my profit. Makes sense. Okay. Because, you know, it's overbought, okay. the risk reward ratio starts shifting uh, as you get up here to the 70 RSI. This is mm -hmm. actually, uh, you know, I exited up here at the end of the day with the fast, I actually bought the 520 crossover and I exited up here because intraday it got over the uh, 70 RSI, but it failed to hold. It had a big candle reversal. So I did get out here uh, 70 RSI. So I did not continue to hold on that pullback. It is higher now. People that waited for the 520 to cross under made more money than, than I did at this point, you know, but you might write it back down and actually lose it. But it's just, there's many different ways to use it. The swing trader might get out 70 RSI over about reading the lock in profits. A momentum trader might just get the first big move and then uh, lock in profits quickly, while a trend trader might hold all the way to the five goes back up to 20. Makes complete sense. Nice. So not only are your exits sometimes a function of crosses, but they're just simply a function of RSI being overbought or oversold. Yes. Yes. I, for me, the, the reward diminishes as you get more, closer and closer to becoming overbought. The best reward, if a 520 crossover happens down in the above the 30, 40 RSI down here, you have a lot of room for it gets overbought. But once you get up here to the top of this chart, the risk reward ratio starts getting diminished. So that's another option for exiting and locking in profits. But each trader can, can uh, manage it the way they want to. Yep, no, that's beautiful. So using the MAs with lower indicators such as oscillators is definitely a, a, nice, a nice combo. So you're not just using moving averages, you're using a little bit of both. 
Um, well, this is great. Is there anything else that you want to go over and kind of touch on uh, to, to let people know how to use this or how you particularly use it? Uh, yeah, I, one of the other secrets to this, if you have a watch list, you say 30 markets are trading and then you back test them all and you come up with, you know, some are best with a 1050 crossover, some are best with a 520 crossover, some are the 10, 1030 crossovers and you've got your watch list. What this will do is eliminate the losers, you know, if the losing stocks, because you, because you don't know in hindsight, you're looking at all these big winners, you don't know. But if you had a watch list of a, of a bunch of different stocks, these will keep you in the winners and get you out of the losers, sort of like an index does. You know, you won't be in Snapchat. If the, you know, no matter what you believe about Snapchat, if Facebook is uh, has the crossover signals, you're going to be in Facebook. And Snapchat's under all the crossover signals, you're not going to be in Snapchat. So it's a filtering process in your watch list to let your winners run and cut your losers short as well. Uh, but the, the key is, though, is understanding how each one of your items work historically and you know, what moving averages will catch the best trends and filter for volatility. Makes sense. And do you do you ever use this as kind of a lagging indicator? So let's say that Facebook is leading the market with a five day cross, and then you look at you know something in Facebook's realm that trades around Facebook or with Facebook, and they haven't crossed above. Let's say the five hasn't crossed above the twenty yet. Is that something you look for too? Kind of a leader versus laggard type of approach. I don't really do that myself, but a lot of times I will benefit, you know, if MasterCard has a crossover and Visa comes out with earnings, you know, and then MasterCard benefits from Visa's earnings, you know, I'll still catch a win. And I didn't really yeah. connect the dots as much, as, but I was in MasterCard because I got the signal and people were also anticipating because you're just getting in with, you know, the anticipators as they get in early. And mathematically, if something's going up, the five has to get over the 20 at some point. The five has to get over the 30, the 10 has to, it has to happen mathematically. So you will mathematically be in uptrend when they happen. That's just how it has to work for an uptrend to be in place. Makes complete sense. And uh, uh, is are you using the five, the 10, the 20? Because you know a lot of people use kind of these random numbers like the nine EMA or, and you know, there's nothing wrong with using those types of numbers, but I kind of, from a mathematical standpoint, the five, the 10, the 20 makes sense because there's five trading days in a week. There's not seven mm -hmm. trading days in a week. At least if you're looking at regular stocks that don't trade on the weekend, crypto is a little different of a story, but you know, the five, the 10, the 20, are those kind of a function of just being a part of the five day trading week? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great thought, Jake. I've never thought of it quite that way. Those, those are just the ones I did the research, and those are the ones that I have found over and over to have the most meaning. Uh, Got it. I've, probably, I've done thousands and thousands of back tests. Uh, one of the fascinating research I saw where somebody did a complete system back test on all stocks, yeah, historically to find the best. And I think the best all time was like it was something like a eleven crossing over the forty nine was the best uh, crossover signal to use mechanically. Back test was eleven forty nine, so that was pretty fascinating. But it's so close to the ten fifty. Ten fifty sounds a lot more clean than a eleven forty nine crossover. So I just went to the ten fifty as yep. a basis, which that is the best universal crossover I've seen is the ten fifty. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I was just curious because, um, you know, just from being able to buy to divide evenly into number of weeks, kind of kind of the same thing with the sixty five minute candle. You know, some people say why. You know, why use a 65 minute candle and then you do the math there's 390 minutes in a day you divide that by 60 and you get six and a half candles instead of using 65 minutes which is a six even candle so i didn't know if it was that kind of same approach but um all in all i mean great stuff it's uh it's fascinating to be able to see how that works and um you know you can use this on the back tester the multi-factor alerts as well as the scanner so remember that there's three big different types of uh uh, features on or tools on the platform that you can apply this to. It's it's obviously visually stunning. It's be it's it really gives you an idea of where price action is relative to these moving averages. But remember, if you did want to scan, if you did want to back test these things, those are all possible in the platform as well. Yeah, it makes it makes it really easy to operate with what I'm doing with using Transpider. Well, we really, we always appreciate you uh, using the back tester. I know you love back testing and really getting those raw data numbers and statistics. So you're letting, you know, the numbers talk rather than just, you know, what you think, which is the way to do it. You know, the market doesn't care about our opinion. It cares about statistics, numbers, what works, what doesn't. And so um, we really always appreciate you uh, using the back tester and highlighting the different back testing uh, capabilities. And thank you so much for showing um, some of these different crosses using the back tester in this video 
And uh, really sincerely appreciate you coming on and sharing this info with everybody. I think this will really help everybody understand the ribbon a little better, how you can use it, how you personally use it, and how they can make this indicator their own. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, come on and talk about it. And I appreciate you having it on your platform. I love it being on there. Hey, we're honored. Yeah, seriously. It's, uh, I'm glad it was a quick win for the dev team. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more back tests and charts using this feature now that we have it on there for you. And um, if anyone has any questions, definitely uh, you can either reach out to us at TrendSpider on Twitter, or you can reach out to Steve on Twitter as well. Just type in Steve Burns and he's, uh, he's, your, he's your first uh, search result. So um, Steve, thank you so much for coming on and explaining this and, and just highlighting the different ways to use this. Uh, I really think this is going to be beneficial for those that are more visual learners rather than just reading about this. Um, that's the way I learned for sure, hearing about it, seeing it um, actually used in, in a visual setting really helps me understand this a lot better. I can't wait to use it. Um, moving averages are something that um, I, initially I didn't use a lot, but after seeing these types of things, being able to back test it and see how strong of a signal it really gives is, uh, is pretty convincing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to using this and trying it out. And uh, everybody, I'd recommend at least checking it out, seeing if it works with your style of trading. And Steve, once again, thank you so much for being a guest on here and explaining this for everybody. And I uh, really appreciate all you do to uh, help spread the word about TrendSpider. Thanks, Jake.